it's lovely to well I can't see any of you because none of you've got pictures up I'm just looking at a load of names that's not fair you can see me I want to see you too <laughs> oh oh here they come all the stragglers at the end the ones that were always late in school and are standing in the corner with their hands on the head that was usually me to be fair especially at secondary school because it was massive you couldn't get across the playgrounds fast enough to get to the next class right so third month so I thought what we would do is do scanning this month because that's the reason why the scan and cut stands apart from, well, one of the reasons why it stands apart from the other cutting machines that are out there. So I thought we'd get to grips with scanning so you can practice this for a month and then next month we'll do something else different. So I'm working on a CM tonight, CM300. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to clean your scanner because I went to Peterborough at the weekend doing the crafting live show, which was fabulous. Met loads of lovely people. So loads of scanning cuts, which was great. And um, I got asked a lot about cleaning the scanner. So I've turned my machine upside down. Make sure it's unplugged and switched off before you do this, please. And then at the bottom, there's this little bar here and there's a little clip at the side. You just push the clip in and the bar comes out. And there's your scanner. So please don't use anything like a blusher brush or a makeup brush or anything like that, duster, anything that's got fibres on it or bristles on it. Just use a micro, damp microfiber cloth and that is like just damp, not wet. So properly damp cloth. Wipe across. Just move your scan and cut around slightly so that you can see when the light hits it in different directions. Make sure there's no stray fibres, anything like that. And then once you've um, used a damp microfiber cloth, just dry it with a dry one. Simple as that. And then this just drops back on there, presses in, scanner's clean. It's important that you keep your scanner clean. It's just part of the housekeeping, really, of, of having a scan and cut. If you've got, you know, spray bits of paper or anything like that, or if you've got marks on your scanner, if it's not recognizing your map when you load it in, it could be because you've got something on the scanner because as the mat goes in, it reads the registration marks by scanning it. So you need to make sure that that's nice and clean. I'm just gonna plug this in and then we can get started with our scanning. So bear with. Um, I just had a question, is there a way to clean the inside of the scanner? That kind of, no, you just kind of clean the screen. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything inside your machine. Anyway, as long as you, Keep the fronts and, you, and the backs of your mat. Your back of your mat is just as important to keep that clean as the front because you'll get little bits of glue as it's coming in. And so you, you put your craft mat on your, your scan and cut mat on your craft table and you burn your card down and there might be bits of stuff on your table that it picks up on the back. So always make sure that the back of your mat is as clean as the front and then you won't get anything inside your scanner. So you should be fine. I've never had any problems with that. Right, scanning mat. So let's just switch this machine on. And this was a brand new machine that we hadn't unboxed. So I'm just gonna put the settings to the correct place. So I'm gonna put my cut speed on five, my cut pressure on one, and then we're good to go. I'm gonna turn the beeping, I think, off because I know it will dry some of you mad. I quite like having it on, but I know a lot of you don't. So I'm going to just turn that off so it's quiet. Right, scanning mat. So a scanning mat is completely different to a cutting mat. The machine won't allow you to cut on this because it will recognize that it's a scanning only mat. And when you buy one, so just to show you, because I kept somewhere, I'm sure I kept the packaging that this came out of because if you're buying one on the website, it's a little bit confusing as to which is SDX and which is CM. I do wish brother would make it a little bit clearer. So when you look for this on the website, if you haven't already got one, you just want the one that says scan and cut here. There's also one that says DX. It's just the one that says scan and cut that you need for your CM machines. And you can scan in on all of the CM machines. So I'm going to peel this back. There's this blue strip with an arrow. You need to take that off because that allows it to read color better. And I would say it was as the CM900 came out, so ooh, it's probably a good five years ago, maybe. Um, 
as the CM900 came out, they did an update that gave you full color scanning recognition, which just was just amazing. I'll never forget that day. I was really giddy about that. Um, so it doesn't matter which machine you've got, you can still do this. This was a new machine that we got quite recently because we sent one of our SDXs back. Uh, no, we sent a CM back and they couldn't, they didn't repair it. So they sent us a new one, which was nice. Not that I'm saying that they will always do that, but yeah. Um, right, so let's start talking about the scanning mat. So no adhesive on it, completely clean inside. If you look after your scanning mat, it should be a one-off purchase. Try not to get spray bits, stray bits of glitter, etc., etc., on because it will pick them up. Um, so just try and keep this nice and clean. And then you've got this plastic that comes over. So we're going to start with scanning in a die cut. Now, there are a few rules and regulations that I need to talk to you about um, because I have to say this. Tattered lace, anything from Quirky Bird to Red Robins, anything that comes out of Highlight Crafts, we are more than happy for you to cut out and scan in and save it to the machine's memory to be able to resize it. If you've got dies from other companies, please, please check first um, because not all of them give you permission to do that. I know Tonic categorically don't allow you to do it, but I don't know about some of the um, other die brands, so please check first. I've cut this out of black card because any scanner, whether it's built into a scan and cut or whether it's in your printer or external, works on contrast and the best contrast to white is black so I always cut it out of black cardstock I'm then going to put this in here and the other thing that I want you to think about is when you scanned this in it's going to bring the cutting file up on the screen so try and get it as straight as you can because if you can't get it if you don't get it slightly straight you've got to start rotating it then when you're cutting it out and if it's something that's you've cut it out of a card and your pressure on your die cutting machine is really, really, really powerful. It might curve your card as you're taking it out of the die. So if you get that, I want you to put a spray adhesive on the back of the die cut, a very light one, and please use an artist grade one, like a 3M, rather than a craft one, because it can go stringy and blobby and it will pick it up on your, on your scanner um, and put it onto a piece of white card because the scanner's that good, it can pick up the shadows. So just be aware of that as well. So we're going to scan, first of all, from the main screen. So we're going to go into scan, and we're going to scan to cut data. Now, scan to cut data just means you're scanning to create a cutting file. So these are the two that you will probably use the most when you're crafting. This one is if you've got important documents, if you've got photos, Anything that you want to scan in to save onto a USB, you're going to use scan to USB. We do sell compatible USBs on the Hello Crafts website. So if you're short of one, that's where you can get them from. But for now, we're going to scan to cut data. Now we've got recognition mode is in grayscale at the moment. So it's going to, that's the best one to use when you've just got black and white or a solid color on a solid color. If I go into here to switch to colour scanning recognition, you click on that, then it will find more colours. So if you're scanning in lots of bits of card or you're scanning in something that's got lots of colours all over it, maybe a piece of paper, something like that, as long as it's copyright free and you're allowed to do it, then you can go onto your colour. Now, that was a phenomenal update because it will read up to 20 colours. So to get that as a free upgrade was amazing. So I'm just going to put it back to grayscale because that's all I need. And I'm going to press OK. So we're going to open up the front of the machine. Put our mat up to the rollers. Make sure you keep hold of the mat. You don't need to grip it like this and push it. You just need to make sure that you rest it in your hand. And I just put my thumb against it. Because if you don't, and it drops out like that, and you don't realise, this roller will take the mat in. And that one won't. And then your mat will load sideways and you don't want that. So we're just going to press load map and we're going to press start. So as soon as this lights up green, it's ready to go. We're just going to scan that in. Now, I've just done the SDX class, I've done exactly what I'm going to do with you. And we, I was asked when you've 
scanned in a die cut like this. So maybe you bought this one, maybe you've got some more de detail ones from um, Tattered Lace. You can take it into Canvas Workspace and manipulate it because when it reads this, it will read it as all individual pieces and then you group it together. If you send it in ungrouped, then you can absolutely play around and manipulate it as well, which is quite a cool thing to do. So it's recognizing now all those different shapes that are in that um, die cut. So you've got three options here. Your top option is the same as direct cut, so it will only ever read the outside edge. So if I click on that, you'll see that all it will find is the rectangle. If you've got any stray bits of sticky on your scanning mat, it will find those too. So if you do have that, just make sure that you use the drag arrows to contain that shape. The other thing that this, this does, because the scan and cuts memory has, I think it was 40, 40 mats worth, 60 mats worth, 40 mats worth, I think, of space, if you like, the closer you can get to the edge with these arrows, the less space it uses up in the memory. If you just leave it full, it will save it as a full mat. Um, you can then save them onto a USB if that's what you want to do, and you can delete them out of the machine's memory as well. So once you delete it, so let's say you've got files 1 to 20 and you delete number 16, the next time you save a file, it doesn't go to number 16, it carries on in numerical order from 20 but it does give you the space back. So that's something to think about. What I tend to do, if I'm doing a project, like I've just designed the Christmas house, I save all the files onto a USB, onto my, into my machine's memory. Then I go through them, eliminate the ones that I don't need and put the ones that I do need on a USB. And then it's, it clears up that memory for me. So we're gonna preview this. Now, just before we do, I'm gonna to talk to you about this little button here. This is, if there isn't enough contrast, between the color card and the background that you've got it on, you can increase or decrease the scale. So by taking it to the right, it increases the contrast. By taking it to the left, it decreases the contrast. So you can use that and you can also zoom in on there as well. Ignore object size is a really interesting one. So as we've talked about before, the Scan and Cut's minimum turning point is three millimeters. And especially on a CM blade, because the blades are so fine, if you go really, really teeny tiny and it tries to turn in a really tight space, it can take the tip off your blade. So you need to just be aware of that. However, if you are scanning in a die cut that you want to make bigger and you don't pick up all those little tiny pieces, when you scale it up, it will look like there's something missing from those spaces. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I'm just going to come out of here. I'm going to press OK. So that's your direct cut, basically. It's the same thing. You won't cut on this map, but it just finds the outline. The one in the middle, or at the bottom rather, will, if I just go into here again, it allowed me to zoom in. It will find the middle of every line. So it's just found the center of all those lines. If you wanted to draw that now, it would draw the pattern and leave the open space so that you can then fill it in with color or you can zentangle in it or whatever you want to do. So that's quite a good one if you want to draw an image that you've got, a file that you've got. And the middle one is the one that we want to use. So this is the one that you will probably use the most when you're saving a file. This will find either side of every line. So it'll find the outside edge and then either side of every shape inside that, that outside edge. So when I click on this one, it's found loads more than the other one. So if I go into here and zoom in, you can see it's now starting to replicate that design. But these little teeny tiny triangles here, it hasn't found because they're smaller than three mil. So if we go into, this is only if you're gonna make the shape bigger Okay, so I'm going to go into ignore object size and I'm going to drop it down to one millimeter. So now it's finding everything that is one millimeter and above, not three millimeters and above. So now when you group this together and make it bigger, those little triangles should be in there. 
So that's how we find, you can see now those little triangles there have got the black line around them, so it's found them. So if you want to take a die cut, make it bigger, you can absolutely do that. This is interesting because it's also allowing me to unlock the aspect ratio, and I don't know why I would want to do that. Oh, hmm. I need to think about that one. Why would I want to change the height of a shape, but not the width? I want to stretch it a bit, I don't know. So Andrew's telling me it's because it might be one mil wide and three mil high and you might want to change it, but that's not going to change the size of the shape. This isn't changing the size of the shape. This is changing the size of the shape that it finds. So I don't think that's quite right, but I will, I'll have a look at that because I've never seen that before. I don't know why you would want it, but there's, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's just one of those things that they put on just in case. So I'm going to press OK now and we're going to save it. And I'm going to pop a USB into my machine. Oh, actually, I can save it into the machine's memory because it's a new machine. So I'll save it into the machine's memory and it will come up with file number one. It's thinking about it. So it has to think about it. It has to find all the lines and then save it. So it's now on file number one. So now I can press home and press OK because I've saved it. Then I go to pattern, save data into the machine's memory and there is my file. So now I press OK and we're going to group it together. So we're going to go to our um, access other areas. We're going to multiple select everything that's on the map. Look at all those little red boxes that it's put around all those shapes. That's how many pieces it's found. That's how detailed it can see things. Then we're going to press OK and we're going to group it together. I have to navigate my way around now because I'm just using SDX. So we group it together. Now, if I go to resize and I make it bigger, remember, as soon as it gets to the edge, you need to move it um, away from it so it can continue to expand. And then eventually you will get to a stage where that's as big as it will go. We'll try and get a little bit bigger. So now when I zoom in, you'll be able to see that it's picked up all those shapes that are alongside here. Now, the other thing that I would say to you is when you die cut, you need to cut from a really good quality card because sometimes if you use an inferior quality card, you end up with lots of little fibers and it almost makes the edges of the open areas a little bit wobbly, a little bit wibbly wobbly, and the scanner will pick that up. So just be aware of that. If it's cutting and it's a little bit of a jaggedy edge, and it can be the same when you've printed something out because sometimes you get an overspray from the ink. If you're, if you're getting that wibbly wobbly edge down the side, it's because either it's not in the best print quality or you've got little fibers of card at the back of your die cut. So get something like a stencil brush and just brush the back and get rid of any stray fibers that there are and you'll get a cleaner scan. Right, so that is scanning on your scanning mat. So I'm going to unload this mat and we're going to talk about scanning in a printed image because I got asked about this a lot over the weekend. So I'm just going to grab myself another piece of card so I can draw this out for you. I've got a question. Yep. Yes. So when you go onto Brother Solutions Center and you've got a CM600, it's actually called a CM600DX. That's the correct name for the CM600. The other CM series doesn't have it. I don't know what the DX stands for. But yes, absolutely, that's the correct one that you want to use. Right, so I've had a lot of people ask me over the weekend about the CraftU print um, downloads that you can get and they're saying that you can scan them into your scan and cut. So the way that a scanner works, if I have a white background that I've printed off on and I've got a white lily, it's not good. So let's, just, I'm, I'm, please forgive my drawing because I am shocking at drawing, but this is your lily and you've got your little stamen in the middle like that and then you've got your leaf here. It will find the stem, it will go around the leaf because that's all green. As soon as it gets to the white and it can't see a contrast between the printed image and the background paper it's printed on, it can't see it. 
so it ignores it. And the scan and cut can't just read a line, it needs a shape. So as soon as that shape is broken, it ignores it and it goes to its next available complete shape, which would be the little stamen in the middle of the lily. So if you're ever finding that when you're scanning a stamp in or you're scanning a digital image in and it's not finding the outside edge, but it's finding the inside parts, it's because that outside edge isn't complete. So to do that, and I'm going to show you this on this um, stamped image that I've got, which is on the other side of this. This is um, a stamp that I had on air this morning, okay? And you can, there's little lines here, which are part of the stamped image. You need to complete those lines. So joining the bottom of the, um, the stem. Sometimes when we stamp, we don't get a very crisp line. Sometimes it's not thick because the, the stamp is really fine. So if there's any breaks in any of the lines, it won't find the outside edge and it will go to its next available full shape. So if you're finding that with anything, that's why you're getting it, okay? Because it needs a complete shape to find that outline. So let's scan this in now so I can show you this. They were great, these tables, but blinking telly nails. Murder. And I can't have normal, I can't have my normal nails because I've had acrylics for so long, they're terrible. Right, so I'm going to burnish this down. If you haven't got one of these, this is probably the only accessory that I would say you absolutely need. Scanning mat is nice if you can stretch to it, but you could always put your die cut on, spray it onto a piece of card and scan it in. But actually for the cost that you would pay for a spray, you might as well buy a scanning mat. And like I said, it's a one-off purchase if you look after it. Right, so I've burnished this down nicely onto my low tech mat. I've got my settings correct on my machine. So I'm gonna load this in and we're going to scan it from here. So we're gonna scan. This time we're going to direct cut. So basically what we're doing now is we're scanning it in we're not saving it to the machine's memory and we're asking it to cut it out. So instead of fussy cutting, the machine's going to do it for us. I'm going to keep it in grayscale because it's black and white. And I'm going to press start. And it's going to scan in, which is super cool. And this one is a little, it takes a little bit longer to recognize than an SDX, but you know what? It still does the job. I still have two CMs at my house that I use all the time. I have three going at once. I'm like a conductor of an orchestra of scanning cuts. So you'll see the blue bar come across. It tells you that it's recognizing it. Now you will see the image on the screen and think, oh good, it's found it. You need to press OK to actually see the, the line that it's found. So you'll see now that it's found that outside edge of that shape. So we know that that outside edge is complete. OK, if it hadn't found that and it had gone to some of these little buds in the middle, you know your line isn't complete or there isn't enough contrast between the background and the shape. If you, if you bought this, let's say it was a Stamperia paper and this flower was in the middle of it and it had polka dots on the background, it would find, go up the stem, as soon as it found a polka dot, it would go around the polka dot, it would go ne up next to the next polka dot and go around that because that's its outside edge. So if there's anything attached on a backing paper, to the outside edge, it will find it. So what do these all mean? Well, you can zoom in if you want to see the, how, the, how well it's found it. Your grayscale bar is on there again, so your contrast bar. This box round here puts shapes around your image. So if you didn't want to cut it out with um, the actual shape of the stamp, you can put a circle around it. You can book a scarlet circle around it. You can put a square around it. If it's meant to be a rectangle, it will change the square to a rectangle. And you can do all these different shapes that are inside here. It does stretch the rectangle a little bit. So I would be more tempted to bring a shape on, scan it in and put the shape around it than do it this way. But it is available. And this one here, this shape is not in your machine's memory. So now you've got that bracket frame that you can now play around with and you can take it into Canvas Workspace 
and create your inward and outward offset line. So that now is a whole new set of nested shapes for you if that's what you want to do. But I just want to go back to the actual shape that it is. So this wibbly wobbly one around here that looks like a blob, that's the actual shape around the image that you've scanned in. So if we press OK, I'm going to ask it to cut it with a one millimeter outward border. OK, so it's going to cut it and it's going to cut it one millimeter out from each part of that stamped image. So it gives me something to color in. So when I'm coloring an image in, I like to have that white edge around so I can put a gray around the image and it makes it pop. So I'm going to ask it to do that. It will cut right to the line if that's what you want, but I actually like that border around it and I'm just going to press OK. And now, <coughs> excuse me, I've done a lot of talking today. I'm going to cut. I was on air this morning super, super early. And then doing this tonight, my voice is a little bit raw, which isn't good because I've got a weekend of starting tomorrow night at eight o'clock with two red robins. So by Sunday night, I might not have a voice at all, which some people will quite say was quite a good thing. My producer's just said, Monday, I'll be quiet then. You're not in on Monday then, Andrew. That'll be why then. <laughs> right, so I've now got, look at that for perfection. Now, I'm pretty good with a pair of scissors because I used to cut out thousands of appliques to um, iron onto garments and paint round. That is, I, I wish I'd had this machine when I was doing that. It would have saved me years of my life, literally. So I've got that perfect piece now. What if I want to mat and layer it? So... We can unload the mat, which might sound strange because it gives you a message to say that the image might shift. That means that if you then loaded your mat back in, it might not be in exactly the right place because there is a slight tolerance as to where you load the mat. But I'm all right with that. But the great thing is when I press OK, the shape's still there. So I can go back. I can't save it. But I can go back and it will go back to the original image. So now I can click on that. And instead of having a one millimeter border, I'm going to ask it to do a three millimeter border. So I'll now have my stamped image, my one millimeter border that it's cut it with, and then a two millimeter mat and layer. And you can go back and do this as many times as you want. So I'm going to press OK. And I know I've used it in the middle of a 12 by 12 mat. That's just because I wanted you all to be able to see it clearly. Um, so you would maybe stamp it up here or here. Don't ever go right to the top and get it as close to the top as you can. Because when you look at your cut area on your machine, it's not a full 12 by 12. It's 11.75 by 11.63 inches. So if you put your scanned edge, your stamped edge right to the top of your paper to be frugal, when it scans it in, it will cut off the top edge and then it won't see it because it's not a complete shape. So it's understanding how the machine sees things and how it works. So I'm going to get a piece of card. I'm going to talk to you about this card later on because this has been the best week for a long time because we've had some fabulous cardstock delivered. And I'm going to choose a, let's choose a nice teal, I think, for this one. So I'm going to choose this one and then I'm going to bring this one in as well for later on. So very exciting. Right, so I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to burnish it down with my scraper again. This is also really good for cleaning your mats. So if you haven't got one of these, we have got a code for you, which is Brother 15. Well, we've got a couple of codes for you, actually. The one is Brother 15, and you'll get 15% off anything Brother, including the SDX machine, <laughs> which is amazing. And if you're a Robin's Nest member, you will also get your 10% discount on top of the 15% on the machine and all accessories. So that's live until midnight on Sunday. So I'm going to load this in and I'm going to ask it to cut that out. And then I'm going to show you how we don't waste the rest of the card. So I'm going to press OK and ask it to cut that. First of all, it's processing the information and then press go. Now, I understand how it is super clever that you can cut shapes out that are pre-installed into the machine's memory. But when you're scanning something in that's either stamped or drawn, 
that blows my mind because that's super clever. You know, this is when this is why I would never buy a cutting machine that didn't have a scanner in because I was the first one to go. I don't understand why we need a scanner, and now I wouldn't absolutely wouldn't touch a machine without one because this is the reason why it saves you so much of that time of crafting where. You know, you might only have a couple of hours a week to craft and you want to be as creative as possible. Doing all the boring bit doesn't make you feel creative. It makes you feel bored. Doing the good bit of colouring in and doing all the rest of it makes you feel better. So you can see now I've got that beautiful stamped image with the white one mil white border and then that over the top, which is, just looks fabulous. So I can do this again now. So I can press OK and unload the mat. And I'm going to put the dark, dark teal on now. And I can go back. So you can still keep going back until you press home and delete. Now, what if I wanted to put one of these shapes around it? So let's go down and let's find, let's just do a, a basic rectangle. And I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to ask it to do, let's do a, let's do an mm, nine millimeter. I don't know how it goes. It goes up to 10 millimeters, so up to a centimeter. Okay, so I'm going to go to nine. I'm going to put a dark piece of teal on here. And I'm going to burnish this down. And I'm going to load this in. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to cut it. And I've just thought of something else that you could do. Right, let me do this first. This is what happens. So it'll be eight years in January since we launched this machine. Still thinking of new things that you can do with it. Just thought of a way that you can save the shape so you can make it into a shape card. Super easy. Right. Oh, that was a silly thing to do, Melanie. Why have I cut that rectangle out of that card, Andrew? I didn't want to do that. I wanted to cut that rectangle out of this piece of card. <laughs> yeah. My alarm went off at half past four this morning, so forgive me. Now I'm going to have to wing on a prayer. Hope that that hasn't moved too much. Oh dear. Oh dear. As my Alice would say. Oh dear. Never mind, Nana. <laughs> See, we all do it. We all do it. We know when you do something, you go, well, they never do it on telly. They always get it right. They make it look really easy. Trust me, we all do it. We just try and learn the mistakes before we go live. Sometimes that doesn't work either. So I'm going to press cut now and start. So I've just had a thought. I could put my pen into my pen holder. So let me finish this bit first and then I'll show you the next bit. So now I can put that on there, which gives me that perfect matte layer because it was the same size. But then I can take my stamped image and have that set inside there. So you see the dark teal behind it, the stamped image, that's your card blank, white card blank, job done. Okay, absolutely fabulous scanning facility. But... If you go back and we get rid of the rectangle, so we go into the shapes and we click the blob at the top and we press OK, we can go back in and we can make this narrower so we can take this back to where we want it to be. So let's say three millimetres. Now when I press OK and keep going, it gives me the option to draw it. So you could draw it onto a white piece of card, then you can scan that in, save it into the machine's memory and then flip it and weld it together to make a shaped card. Just make sure that you've got permission from the people who design the stamps to be able to scan it in and save it into the machine's memory. But if it's one of your drawings, that's fabulous. So say your little girl came, little girl, little boy came home from school and they've drawn a gingerbread man. You can scan that gingerbread man in, create a cutting file from it and make a shaped card out of it. And that could be their Christmas card to send to their friends at school. How fabulous is that? That's why you need a scanner in a cutting machine. Right, so next thing. I'm going to show you how to scan in Charisma or Reflections. So Charisma is tattered lace. Reflections is two red robins. I'm sure you all know that by now, but we always get new people all the time, which is lovely. And we actually sell quite a lot of machines at um, 
at, at Peterborough at the weekend. So our Scallon Cup family is growing, which is super exciting. I love that. So I'm going to pop into the side of my Scan and Cut a Two Reds Robins USB. When you print off your reflection, so if you buy the USBs from us, um, when you put it into your computer, it will open up a folder that says Reflections. You go into there and you will see um, SVG files and PDF files. Your PDF files are your printable documents. And you're going to print it off at either actual size or 100%. Don't do fit to page because then your cutting file won't match. So I'm going to pop this onto my mat here like this. And because this is a newish mat, I'm just going to very gently push this down. When I'm, use, when I'm printing off reflections, I tend to print it on a 140, especially if you're going to decoupage the layers up because the scan and cut is a straight blade. If you use a 250 GSM for your decoupage layers, you'll see all the white edges. It doesn't tuck it underneath like a die does. So using a thinner paper, A, stops the card becoming too heavy and falling over. B, saves you on postage because it's too heavy and bulky, but also it gives you a really nice cut. So for this, for a 140, I'm going to take my blade down to, I'm going to say three because I just want that blade coming out of the top. And I'm gonna drop my pressure, my cut pressure down to uh, zero as well. So let's do that before we start cutting. So I'm gonna go down, take my cut pressure to zero. You can go to a negative. So if you find when you're cutting thinner paper that it's scrunching it, it's nothing to do with the speed. It's two, uh, one of two things, either your pressure's too high and it's forcing that blade and it doesn't need to, or your blade depth isn't high enough so the blade can't get right through the paper and cut it from underneath. So it's dragging it. So it's one of those two things. Right, so we're going to, first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring on the, the cutting file. So when you're doing this, and when you're scanning from the internal screen of the machine, you don't bring, you don't scan it in first, you bring the shape on first. So we're gonna to go to save data. We're gonna to go to the USB and here are your four collections. At the bottom of your reflection, it will always tell you the name of the collection, the name of the file. We did them in three different sizes just to get people started. So it will either say small, large, or extra large. If it doesn't have a size on, it's always the original. And if it's a reversed reflection, it will tell you on the bottom of the sheet. So all the information that you need will be printed off with your colored artwork. So I'm gonna go into first price, a hint of sun, You've got detailed cuts, um, and I'm gonna do a video with detail cuts because the detail cuts are for different things. So you can cut with the detail cut. It's, you would get the, basically the effect of a die with all the cut lines in. However, I don't use detail cuts on top of a reflection for the same reason that I use a lighter weight paper. Because if you start cutting all the detail lines into this, if you're sticking it flat, it's okay. If you want to put any kind of shape into it, you will see the white edge of the card underneath because it, obviously the ink doesn't go from top to bottom of the paper. So you will see the white edges. You can draw it. You can use your foiling kit. You can emboss it. And I'm going to do a video probably next week where we take the foiling glue pen from Brother. We put it in the universal pen holder and we use the detail cut over reflection to foil because that's what you can do. Right, your matte cuts are the matte layer that it sits on top of. So if you wanted to make a shaped card, maybe you wanted to make a row of four sunflowers next to each other, all welded together, use the matte cuts and then cut your, your printed sunflowers out separately and glue them on top. So it gives you shapes to weld together, which is cool. And then your reflections is the cutting file for your artwork. So you can see here, we've got original, large and extra large. So we're gonna to go to original. We've then got the decoupage cut and the reflection cut. So we click on the full cut, wait for it to retrieve that data. Now we always make sure that all our files can be read on all scan and cuts, including the lower spec. And I say that very loosely. The only reason that we call the CM300 and 600 a lower spec machine is because it doesn't read as many lines. 
it reads 300. The uh, 900 reads 600 and the SDX reads 900. So it's just, if you've got really, really, really complex designs that maybe you've bought from different companies, if it won't open on your machine, it's either because you haven't updated your machine so it doesn't read SVG files yet, because that was another update. So if you've never updated your machine, it does read SVG files, but it'll tell you it won't until you update it. Or, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is really starting to go now. Or um, there's too many lines and it can't read as that many, that quantity of lines. On our USBs, including tattered lace, we always make sure that it absolutely does. So I'm going to press OK now and I'm going to put that onto the screen. I'm going to go to my access other areas and I'm going to multiple select everything on the mat. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to group them together. So now I can move this around as one piece. So now we need to scan it in. So we press OK and here is your scanner. So this is what I call the internal scanner. This is the one that you don't get on your home page. You have to go into the machine to be able to find it. So we're going to scan this in now. Scanning it in so that the machine can see the outside edge of the sunflowers because we have a cutting file for that. We also put a bleed on our artwork so that if it doesn't line up, if you don't line it up absolutely perfectly, you don't get that horrible white edge. You get you still get the colour. So that's why we do that. I'm going to go into here, my spanner, and make the background lighter so that you can see. But it's brought up a full colour image on the screen. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into here and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in to 400%. And then I'm going to move this across like this. And I'm going to drop it right over the top of that black rectangle. If you need to adjust adjust it fractionally you can come out and go into your directional arrow buttons every arrow that you nudge is one millimeter so if I move that down now it will probably be too far down but let's try and see what we get so I nudge that down and I can see on my screen that it, that line becomes thicker so it doesn't need to move down if I move it across again the line on the left becomes thicker so I know that I am pretty much bang on. So if I zoom in again and scroll down here, you'll see that those sunflowers are directly in the middle of that bleed. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to tap the screen to release the shapes. Now I do that for two reasons. One, if you're only going to cut the bottom, you just want one sunflower, but you need to, you want to keep the rectangle to be able to line the rest up when you want to cut those you can delete the rectangle off now. Or, and this is a really cool way of doing it, you can click on your spanner and you can change your background, you can change your cut area rather. So as soon as I drag that arrow over there, it will eliminate the rectangle and it's also eliminated the top row of sunflowers. But when I go to my cut screen, and I'm not gonna cut them because I want to show you resizing, it tells me there's a pattern outside the effective area the pattern cannot be cut or drawn, but it also says OK to continue. So when you press OK, it will just find the four sunflowers that are at the bottom. So either way, it keeps that rectangle intact. And that rectangle is crucial because then you don't have to drag the sunflower and line it up over a sunflower. You just line up the rectangle and that's how it works. So I'm going to come out of there and put my cut area back to normal. And I'm going to show you how you would um, resize and just go back and then I can just press home. There we go. Right, unload that. So earlier on, I resized this image by 50%. So I made it 50% smaller on my print, um, on, my, on my print settings. So you'll have a percentage box. You might say scale might say percentage, whatever it is. So I've knocked it back to 50%. If you've got a printer that allows you to put more than one on a page, you can do that as well. Now, on the SDX, you can resize as a percentage. So when you go to the resize box, you click the percentage and you just drop it down to whatever percentage you've shrunk it down by. 
You don't have that facility on a CM, but it doesn't matter because you take a ruler and you just put it along the right hand side of the height and it's 126 mil. That's the only measurement that I need. I don't need to measure the width. I just need the height, which is 126 mil. So now when I scan this back in, I'll load them out. I'm going to bring on my pattern first. So we go to pattern. Save data, USB, first prize, a hint of sun, reflections, original, and you will get to a stage where you whiz around it like this because you need to practice. This is why we're doing it in little bursts, little chapters every month so that you practice in between because then it's not too much to learn in one go. And I have to really contain myself because every time I find something new, I'm like, oh, I can do that, but I've got a list. <laughs> now I've got to work my way through. And some people said to me at Peterborough, you know, we know the basics, so they'll join in the journey later on. But I know there's loads of you that still had it in the box. So that's it's perfect for you. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go into here and take my cut area back to full like that and press OK. And then we're going to group it together. So we're going to multiple select everything on the mat, press OK and go to group. And now I'm going to scan this in again. So I'm going to press OK and I'm going to scan it in and press Start. It really is very intuitive. Once you, under, once you know what those little icons do, it makes sense. And I think the more you use it, the easier it becomes. It's just, just it literally becomes second nature, just like using your washing machine is. Or your, well, I can't say a mobile phone because there's loads of stuff on my phone that I don't even know exists. <laughs> so I want to shrink this down now. So I go into here and into my resize button here. And the only number that I'm interested in is the height because that's what I measured. And I'm going to take that down to 126 because that was the height of the rectangle like that. So when I now press zoom and go into 400% and I scroll down on my screen, go back up a little bit further because that was a little bit too low. I'm just going to drop this in now over that rectangle and it should there. Press OK. And now I've got every single one of those sunflowers lined up perfectly over that reflection. Now I can see it's a little bit further over on the left and I can see that that line is a little bit thicker. So I'm going to come out. I'm going to go to my directional arrow buttons. And I'm going to move it over and I'm actually going to drop it down one because when you're sat in front of it and you can see what I can see, it's like there's the red line of the cut file and the black line of the um, artwork is underneath it. So I'm going to drop it down. So there's no side of it that looks thicker on your screen. So a lot of people have said, oh, I wish that we had the SDX function where you can move it while you're still in zoom mode. You can actually see it quite clearly. And then you would just go ahead and cut that out, which is just fabulous. And that really covers everything that you would want to scan in. So decoupage wise, there needs to be a complete edge. It needs to be able to see the whole shape. Otherwise, it will go to its next available shape. Scanning a die cut in, please remember to ask permission. If you've got a downloadable template, for example, that has perforation lines in for your score lines, as long as it's copyright free, you can scan that in, use the bottom option in your scan to cut data, which cuts in the middle of every line. That will cut your template out for you. We will cover, cover scoring on the scan and cut, maybe in the next class, because you don't score with a scoring tool, you score with your blade, because the scoring tool is useless on here unless you've got something for it to go into, like a soft mat. It's there's no effort to go in, so it just leaves a shiny line down your card. It's pointless, so I'll teach you that as well as we go along. But it's just a really cool function. And to be honest, I actually don't think that this machine would have sold as many tens of thousands as we have without it having that scanner in because it sets it apart from everything else. And it's brilliant. So like I said, your children come home at Christmas, your grandchildren, they've drawn a little Father Christmas, you can scan it in create a card shape out of it. That's super fun. And they'll love it. Absolutely love it. So there's a couple of things I need to tell you. The first thing is that we have the brother code, which is brother 15. That will give you 15% off everything brother, 
including the SDX machine, until from the Highlight Crafts website, not Create and Craft. So please don't ring customer services and say, we haven't got 15% off because they won't know what you're talking about. This is all from Highlight Crafts. And if you are a Robin's Nest member, you will then get a further 10% off. What did we find, say that that brought the SDX down to, Andrew, please? 458 pounds, 24 pence. And you can split it on um, PayPal Pay and 3 or 4 Clear Pays, which is brilliant. So if you're thinking about it as a Christmas gift, maybe you're going to ask people to um, club together. A lot of people asked me, do I need to upgrade? The answer is no, you don't need to. You might want to, but you don't need to because you can do every, everything that you can do on the SDX, you can do on the CM with Canvas Workspace. So there's a way around it. But if you think, oh, I'd like the quieter machine, I'd like the bigger screen, then absolutely, that's a phenomenal price. Now, let me talk to you about this cardstock because I'm super excited about this. In fact, I'm going to open another packet and show you. I'm going to show you the reds. So we have sourced this tw by 12. Bear with, I need my voice to come back a minute. Tell you. Right. One day I'll wake up and I just won't have a voice and some people will be very grateful for that. So we've sourced this card and it's 12 by 12. Textured on one side, smooth on the other, and very low chalk content. <coughs> Sorry. And you will have heard me talk about card like this before. And I absolutely stand by what I've said. However, the little niggle that I had with that cardstock was that you had to buy it in packs of brights, pastels, spring. And there were always colours that I didn't use because I always went through reds and pinks, yellows, purples and greens and neutrals faster than any other. So I was left with the lime greens and the pink, the bright fluorescent pinks and the oranges and, and some random colours that I didn't really use. So when we found this cardstock and it is absolutely as good a quality, I actually think the colour is a little bit more intense. I might be wrong, but it feels like that to me. It might just be the colours that we've chosen. We decided to bundle them in packs of 24, eight colours, three of each. It's 216 GSM, so it's a perfect weight for this and for your die cutting as well. But we want I wanted them in colour families. So if you run out of pinks and reds, you didn't need to buy the whole lot. You could just buy the pinks and reds. And it is beautiful cardstock. Now, it's normally $13.99 a pack. Um, we're giving you 20% discount. This has just come into stock. So this is a brand new product for us here at Highlight Crafts, which will bring it down. If you, if you are then a Robin's Nest member, you will get a further 10% off, which brings it down to about £10 and nine pence a pack. If you buy three packs and you're a Robin's Nest member, you get your postage free, which is also great. So let's have a look at this one. We've given them all names of desserts. So this one, I believe, is Cherry Bakewell. So in here, we have your cover sheet. So you can keep that as a guide as to the colours that you've got. You've got this lovely, really soft peach colour here. Now, if you're a scrapbooker, and you're scrapbooking a family journey and you want to bring out the face on your photographs, this is a perfect colour to use. This is why I've chosen it. We then go into a nice soft salmon colour, which is lovely. And then we go into a lovely, um, almost like a coral colour. So you've got the three that work together perfectly. Then we go into almost like a blush pink. So a little bit of a, this, the previous, this one I would call a warm pink because it's almost like a cream base color. And this one I would call um, a white base because it's got it's, it's a blue base because it's got that white color to it, it's lovely. And then you've got your mid color and then you've got your deeper color of that. And then we go on to my favorite favorites, which are these reds. So you've got a proper pillar box red and this is really, really heavily dyed. You look at it and it's just that beautiful, rich color. There's no little bits where you look at it and it's a bit patchy like you can get with some cardstock. This is proper, proper red. It's a beautiful colour. And then you've also got the darker red in there. So if that's something that you're interested in, we do six different colour packs at the moment. 
Um, I handpicked all the colours for you. So as a scrapbooker, I'm used to working with a colour wheel and working with colours that work and colours that blend, etc., etc. But I love the idea of being able to buy it in colour families. So if you just run out of your yellows, you can just buy yellows. If you just run out of greens because you're making a lot of florals, you can just stock up on your greens. And um, let us know what you think about it as well, because it is fabulous. This code is capital C, capital M, so Craft Master, because it's under that brand, 1212. So CM1212. And you will get 20% off um, because you've been on this class. Please don't share it because I'll get in so much trouble because it's just for you guys who join us. It's live till Sunday at midnight, as is your scan and cut code, and you can use both together. So it's not that you can only use one code, you can use both of them. So you would put in your brother accessories into your basket, use the code, then add the next, the cardstock to your basket, use that code, and it will not both off. And if you are a Two Red, Ro a Two Red Robins Nest member, you also get your extra 10% off as well. So that makes it worth looking at, which is fabulous. We've got a question, a general question. Go on. So who's this from, Andrew, please? So Carol is trying to make an envelope with a scalloped flap. So I would have, right, I'm literally working on the hoof here because I wasn't expecting that question. So let's bring on a, let's say it's a square. I'm going to set it onto the mat like that. And I'm going to make it bigger. And Carol, if this doesn't answer your question, if you email me at mel at highlightcrafts.com, I'll work it out and then we'll, we'll, I'll go through it with you. So let's say that's 160 mil. I'm going to put it in inches because we will work in inches as an envelope, I would have thought. So let's do a six by six envelope. So you would then have to have your flaps that come across here. So your triangles come in in here. So we need to work that bit out, but we'll do that at a later date. I just want to work out this flat bit. So the flat bit is going to go up here. So if you brought on a add and bring on a scalloped square and set that on the mat and made rotated that by, oh, that's undo Melanie. I'm trying to find all these, all these, symbols because I've been working on an SDX. Let's do it by 45 degrees. So it creates a diamond and do that bit first and then make that six inches like that. And then you're going to zoom in to 400% and you're going to scroll down and you're going to move this down so that that middle scallop is in the middle of that line there. So the next thing you're going to do is align it. So you're going to multiple select everything that's on the mat, press OK, go to your directional arrows and your alignment function and align it to the left or the right, doesn't matter. And then you should be able to weld that and that becomes your envelope flap. So you'll do that. Then you would take your square again, rotate it again and weld that bit. That would give you the bit on the sides. And then you'll do the same thing and that will give you the thing at the bottom. Now you might need to do it. You might need to do it as separate pieces because of the mat. But if you've got a 12 by 12 mat, it will probably fit on or you might need to do it in separate pieces. So you might need to just have uh, a square that glues on and then it scores and another one that glues on and scores, etc., etc. But that's how you will get your scallop on there because you're going to have to add another one down here, one here and one here. So it might be too big as one as what they call a net where you've got the whole shape, but it's absolutely doable with that. 
and then you can score it with your blade, which we'll talk to next time. I've got this really irritating young man in my ear called Andrew, who thinks he knows more about a scan and cut than I do, and he's trying to work it out in a completely wrong way, telling me that it will fit by doing it 12 by 12. I have one word for that, Andrew. Well, one movement, and that's that. Now I can't hear him. <laughs> Thank you, every single one of you, so much for joining me. Go and make the most of those codes because we like a discount, don't we? We like a deal and a bargain. So go and grab yourself some goodies. Remember, it's live till midnight on Sunday, so you've got plenty of time. And then we will um, put out on all our social platforms, so on Instagram, Twitter. I don't think we're quite on TikTok yet. Facebook, um, when the next class is. Somebody said to me it's an, on the uh, at the weekend you don't tell us when the next one is and I'm like that's because I have no idea because <laughs> we work on TV and everything changes in a heartbeat but there will definitely be one in November and there will definitely be one before I finish work in December for Christmas because I'm having a really nice long Christmas break and then I'll come back with lots of other goodies the other thing we will let you know about is the Christmas house that we are doing as a class so I will record the class for you teach you how to create the files from the shapes inside the machine's memory. Now, even if you are an absolute beginner, you will be able to follow that class because it will be videoed for you. So you'll be able to watch it, do it, watch it, do it, rewind it, rewatch it, etc. So keep an eye out for that as well. It's been an absolute pleasure spending my Thursday evening with you. I am back on air tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on Create and Craft with Two Red Robins. I've got the Weekender, which is lovely. It's not an SVG USB, it's dies, but it's worth tuning in for some ideas. Um, and I will see you next month. So take care, have a great month, lots of love. Take care, see you soon.